The views or opinions expressed on Ann Arbor Inclusive do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the City of Ann Arbor and the Commission on Disability Issues. For more information about the Ann Arbor Commission on Disability Issues, please visit a2gov.org slash disability resources. Hello everyone and welcome to Ann Arbor Inclusive. I'm Zach Damon. We have a wonderful show for you today as James Murtha, intern and volunteer at the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, join us in studio. And James, I'd like to get the ball rolling, shall we? Yeah, so, let's do it. All right, wonderful. So the Reeve Foundation is dedicated to curing a spinal cord injury by funding innovative research and improving quality of life for people with paralysis. But I'm curious, what was it that led you to start working with the Reeve Foundation? Right, well, I got injured three years ago out in Colorado, and I came back five months later to Michigan, and while I was doing my outpatient rehab at University of Michigan, um, I got to in touch with Tom Holtland, who's, um, he's, a, he's a Christopher Reeve peer mentor, mm -hmm. and he, uh, he got to talking to me, and the more we got to know each other, the, um, he got to, he, he invited me out to be, uh, to go with him to the hospital, to the inpatient floors, mm -hmm. the rehab floors, because he, he thought that I'd be good with, as a mentor, and so I uh, checked it out, and I really enjoyed it, and so I got trained and um, been with them since. Wow, that is amazing. And Tom Holtland, you know, great individual, great advocate in the wonderful uh, Ann Arbor community. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk about, too, just how rewarding it is for you, uh, you know, to be able to work uh, with the Reed Foundation and, 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 you know, be in the spot that Tom was and bringing that hope uh, and that, that uh, zeal uh, to mm -hmm. people that go through that? Yeah, I mean, any time that you're able to be a part of something bigger than yourself, it gives you a lot of sense of purpose, and that's something that you lose after a spinal cord injury. Like, you, you start to question, you know, what's your place? Mm -hmm. What's your place in society? What's your place in your, you know, your family? Mm -hmm. Like all areas of life. And so having this organization like as a presence for the spinal cord injury community is huge mm -hmm. because of the resources they provide and the support that they offer. And also being able to be a part of that gave me, gave me, um, gave me just another reason to, you know, keep going and to have, like, have hope and feel yep. like, you know, feel like I am helping others and, you know, yeah. being a part of something big. That's awesome. And I think the fact that you, uh, you know, not only are taking action to be being a part of, you know, that community and being a part of impacting those that have been recently, unfortunately, uh, paralyzed, I think that is very noble because, again, uh, you know, going through that, I can't imagine uh, the amount of highs and lows that they go through. And so mm -hmm. it, it's got to be uh, just a wonderful, wonderful thing uh, for you to offer them hope. So thank you for doing that. Uh, I, I'd like to touch a little bit on the backgrounds of the foundation. In 1995, uh, Christopher Reeve, of course, was injured. Right. Uh, and the American Paralysis Association, or APA, was actually one of the first places that he and Dana had turned to. And of course, in 1999, the APA and uh, Christopher Foundation came together uh, to form the Christopher Reeve Foundation, right. uh, which then, of course, added uh, Dana's name uh, after her death, of, of course, in mm -hmm. 2006. And I'd like to read the mission statement because I think uh, it's very important. And their mission state uh, mission uh, can be summed up, it says, into four words. It says, today's care is tomorrow's cure. And it reflects the dual purpose set forth by the Christopher and Dana Reeve and to provide a continuum of hope for individuals living with paralysis worldwide. So this mm -hmm. isn't just something that's here in Ann Arbor, here in Michigan, here in the U.S., mm -hmm. but throughout the world. And in your own particular situation, you know, why do you feel this mission is important? Well, um, just because there's any time like any time for any of us like this could impact our lives either anybody's life either 
directly or indirectly just because you know the human body is such a fragile thing indeed and um and before before the before the chris reeve before chris reeve took like really started taking initiative there wasn't a there wasn't a uh like a real strong presence sure. to promote the cause sure. and so even though there were a lot of people advocating for disabilities, like it didn't really have, they didn't really have a lot of um, presence. Sure. And so him being such a like, you know, well-known person, mm. you know, as unfortunate as this was for him, I mean, he really took it and made it a mission, you know, and he, and he, uh, he really got the movement um, just propelling a lot a lot faster than it was before and so um, it's it's just uh, it's not only important for um, for the disability community members mm -hmm. but it's um, it's important for it's important for the just to change the way that society thinks not only of mm. like not only of the di like disabled community but for you know it's a change like it's yeah it can it can manifest in like other communities too I, I completely agree with you James mm -hmm. I mean changing the perception of what is disability right or what mm -hmm. is differently abled or just changing that stigma or what that is in society I, I, I couldn't agree more and I think the work that you're doing uh, is helping that become you know something that's on the forefront of people's thought and i wanted to touch more too on your work as a mentor ambassador and intern with the reed foundation uh how is your experience within the organization again you know how do you feel that that's helped you personally and professionally i mean do you feel that it's that organization uh for somebody that you know has paralysis does it help them personally to be involved and professionally as well it does just from like you asked for personal experience i mean obviously like this is you know a part of my life and mm -hmm. they have they have a wealth of resources um, a lot of information so personally like it's it's huge to have them as a presence because of everything that they have um, to offer and professionally like through being involved with them i mean well personally i mentioned that it gives me like another sense of you know purpose and gives me you know more drive to keep going like you know day to day yeah. um, professionally like I mean it's it's given me it's given me more um, more understand like looks at like what's going on mm -hmm. you know in the world in like in, like the world of like you know running a foundation like this sure. and you know, seeing, seeing what it takes to operate something like this, so. Yeah. Well, and they're definitely an organization, I feel like, that is in the know. Is that accurate to say that? I mean, they're always in the forefront of definitely. knowing what the innovations are uh, within research. Yeah, um, like, like the motto says, today, today's care, tomorrow's cure. Like, mm -hmm. they, they're heavily, um, they're heavily involved in, um, being proponents of research, they uh, they they um, they have their own research uh, called the Big Idea, um, which is all it's about uh, epidural stimulation, okay. and it's causing like they right now they had four people in that study who um, received epidural stimulation, so stimulation right on the spinal cord. And, really? Wow. And it gave them back um, some motor function, some... Did it really? Yeah, and wow. some uh, bowel, bladder, and sexual function as well. Wow. Yeah, so they're doing that, but they're also... The organization also advocates um, at a national level okay. for disability rights and for... Um, to keep the organization going itself, because you know, as you, as you you might be aware, the um, the fiscal year budget is being has been being reconfigured, mm -hmm. and uh, currently the PRC, the per Paralysis Resource Center at the Reed Foundation, 
had been it had been cut from the proposed budget for 19. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, and um, or 18, sorry, and so they're working right now to they're working right now to um, advocate and make sure that that funding does not get cut, so they're able to keep providing resources because they uh, they provide resources like not only um, not only to people with paralysis, but to their family members, yep. to caregivers, and um, it's just, and they also provide in multiple languages like. Yep. Like they've serviced like up to they've provided service in uh, up to 150 different languages. Wow, 150. Because, yeah, wow. because they can work with interpreters. That's awesome. Yeah, and they're just they're really resourceful, and there's and for like individuals who have paralysis or family members, they can call in to the information yep. specialist and just say, hey, this is what I'm going through. And the specialist will will ask them, you know, like where are you and what do you have to work with? And based off of that, they'll give them, you know, a unique, yeah. you know, customized answer. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, you know, so many other things that they have, like in the foundation, like yeah. in terms of, uh, they have quality of life grants for if like yep. if there's an organization that's uh, at grassroots and they're trying to take off and um, need some support yep. they, they can apply for a grant to receive funding to um, to have that extra boost to be able to get either get started or keep going and nice. so they've um, given out thousands of grants to different organizations around the around the nation and they also have a wealth of other resources they have a um, well, if you don't they mind, have a library and th and things like that, like yeah. a uh, like a lo like a library loan program, and for like with books, videos, ebooks, all that stuff. So, dang, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. that they and provide they, and they have a mentoring program. Yeah, that's like a big thing about them too. Yeah, obviously. no, that's that's awesome, James, and it's great that you're so mm -hmm. knowledgeable and know so much of what they offer. You know what? I actually want to touch on yeah. that. Uh, in 2002, the Reed Foundation Paralysis Resource Center, or PRC. Uh, opened its doors, and the PRC mm -hmm. consists again, as you stated, uh, of a variety of services, uh, communities, and programs, including information specialists, as you talked about, peer and family support programs, quality of life grant programs, uh, the military and veterans program, or NVP, right. and yes, my favorite, mentioned. the advocacy policy program, uh, designed to not only help individuals advocate for themselves, but also advance important issues for the greater of communities of individuals with paralysis. Mm -hmm. Now, as an ambassador, I'm curious, why is being an advocate for yourself and others important? Well, um, the point, like, first things first is that you have to advocate for yourself first. I mean, because you can't expect others to do everything for you, and mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, at some point, like, you know, you need to be your own advocate. That's something that a lot of people, like, when they're first injured, you know, like, that's a valuable piece of advice that a lot of people, you know, need to hear. And right. so, and you also need to advocate for others because, you know, some people may not be aware of what's out there. People may not be as knowledgeable about, like, resources that are available and such. So, you know, it's important to, you know, still, like, help each other out and yeah um, and uh, yeah was that was that hard for you in the beginning to sort of advocate for yourself can you talk yeah. about the evolution of that yeah um, just because like when you go through something like this there's so many things going on like you're I mean you're coming and coming to terms with like what's just happened like mm. with becoming paralyzed and I mean some people like me, I had a background as a me emergency medical technician, so beforehand. So I mean, I kind of understood what was happening, but some people have no right. prior experience, like you know, or prior knowledge about you know anatomy or anything like that. So you know, they don't understand like and like you know what's going on, and so there's that. There's um, there's the confusion. There's the confusion that's going on with that, and there's a lot of body body changes that are going on. But once those subside, you know, like 
you know, reality starts to set in, like, you know, you need to start dealing with um, barriers, mm -hmm. like, you know, that, like, some people may, some people may not be able to go home right away because sure. their home's not built for, you know, a wheelchair. And, right. um, so there's financial, financial barriers. So there's a lot of different things going on. Yep. And there's, and so with all these things happening, it can be hard to, you know, take, it can be hard to take, right. like, you know, take mm -hmm. the reins and, you yep. know, and also have, you know, the awareness to find, right, like, resources that are out there. Yeah, I mean, being, a, being an adult and adulting, as they say, you know, and paying yeah. bills and having a job and, and scheduling and all that stuff is also a lot, but then having to take on, uh, you know, paralysis and, and mm. the obstacles that come along with that, uh, you know, has to be a whole nother, uh, you know, set of challenges and a whole nother thing that, that people have to sort of sit down and compartmentalize and say, okay, let's, you know, deal with this. And uh, again, you know, I think it's great uh, that you're able to not just advocate for yourself, but teach others how important advocacy is as, a, as an ambassador. Uh, but aside and, from... And also part of the ambassador work is reaching out to hospitals and um, making sure that they, A, know the foundation exists and B, knows, you know, why it's important, what it can do. Like, that's, that's the big part of the ambassador, uh, that the ambassador program that they, they just recently kicked it off last summer. And oh, so, really? Yeah, so we're hoping that it'll pick up steam and, you know, grow, grow our network with hospitals. Well, with you at the helm, uh, being one of those ambassadors, I have no doubt that it will. Uh, but aside from the great work, James, uh, that you do uh, with the Reeve Foundation, uh, you're also uh, a social work major at the wonderful mm -hmm. University of Michigan, right here in Ann Arbor. And I'm curious, you know, what will you bring uh, to those that you work with uh, in the field, and what do you think uh, great qualities that you have uh, mm -hmm. that you can bring to the show, social work, work field upon graduation? Mm -hmm. I think everybody has their own unique skill set. Everybody has a unique background that they come from. Um, for me, like I, I came from, you know, a medical, medical background. Like I studied biology for many years and I, uh, and I studied to be an emergency medical technician and, um, and so I have, I have that perspective, like that, like style, that style of thinking. But, um, and also just, I mean, my demeanor. Like, I mean, I, I'm patient and um, compassionate, but also, you know, persistent. You know, I don't get complacent. And so, um, those are. Those are my own skill sets. Yeah, man. Bring. No, I, you know what? I'd always, I'd, al I'd also put in there driven, right? You say yeah. persistent, I say driven because you have also, with that, a great amount of tenacity. You know, you just go after what you want. Uh, you're a very headstrong individual, mm -hmm. great intellect, and I think that is one of the great gifts uh, is intellect. And so, uh, I really applaud you uh, for being at one of the best, if well, the best public institution in the United States and the University of Michigan and uh, you know look forward to you uh, getting your degree definitely. Thanks. Um, can you share uh, one great memory you have while working with the Reeve Foundation? I think I'm going I'm uh, having a lot of uh, I'm making a lot of great memories right now for through what I'm able to do as being an, being an intern with them because um, because it's it's been it's been really fascinating to be able to see how things are going, you know, behind the scenes and like what what it takes to run the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And uh, have you made a lot of great, uh, you know, professional friends uh, within the organization that you didn't think you were gonna necessarily uh, encounter when working with the foundation? Yeah, I had no idea like how how much. How many team members there, uh, like that, went into running the operation? Sure. Like they have people, people uh, running like the policy 
area, like mm -hmm. advocating for policy and uh, people running quality of life grants, like just in that department. And, um, and I've gotten to know the people in the mentoring program better. And mm -hmm. so it's just, and then the information specialist team. So it's just mm -hmm. been really, uh, it's been really surprising to, you know, learn sure. like how all these, all these different parts come together. So, yeah. Have you, so of all those different departments and all the different resources at the foundation, do you have mm -hmm. one uh, that, that you're really gravitating towards in terms of policy, in terms of mentorship? Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of sticking with primarily with my original um, like affiliates, if sure. you will, yeah. in the mentoring program. And they're uh, giving me a lot of, they've been giving me a lot of opportunities to give my opinion on how I think the foundation could be better. Nice. Like we've worked on how, projects for how to support, how to support the mentors and uh, give them more resources for when they, when they have questions or uncertainties or need extra tools to for development. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're also looking at, um, they're giving me, they, they asked for my opinion on like new ways that the foundation could take on nice. new projects. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, I got to give them my uh, two cents. Of, there we go. Yeah, and I got to give them my, uh, <laughs> my personal spin on where I think they could take things. And so it's, it's been really cool to collaborate with them on that. Oh yeah, and I think it's great too that they're so receptive. I mean, I think maybe that's what makes the Refoundation amazing is that they take yeah. that information and they become better. And, uh, you know, and they're always growing. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, they'll be around, uh, you know, for decades to come. And uh, with you do, you, do you see yourself with the organization for a long time? Or, or what's your dream once you graduate and get a degree in social work? Well, uh, my dream was to, like, the reason I got into social work was because uh, I wanted to do, I wanted to do counseling therapy work for sure. people who have had um, either uh, either a spinal cord injury or have um, or are battling addiction mm -hmm. and um, and I wanted to get into this because I wanted to I wanted to improve the outcomes for people after they go through it after they have a spinal cord injury like mm -hmm. I wanted to help people be like get more get to having a successful like getting back to like having a fulfilling successful and happy life quicker yeah and um and i'm getting to do that already through like what i'm doing with the reeve foundation there you go as an intern i'm also uh working with a couple different groups on the side um there's a group in Ohio called uh, SCI. They call them. They call, we call ourselves SCI Connect, and okay. they're doing a lot of advocacy work for um, Ohio people in Ohio who have disabilities to get more help for home help and like change the policies on sure. that. Because like right now, it's it's really really challenging to navigate um, home help right. through the um, through the state Medicaid right. and so they're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of gr groundwork to change that and uh, I'm also part of another group of uh, individuals um, we call ourselves uh, thrive after SCI and okay. we're we're trying to change the change the like attitude of like what is life after a spinal cord injury like it's not just surviving it's yep. you know thriving it's you know that's right. Growth. It's you know continuing your life, not you know yep. refiguring it out. So that's yeah. right. So I mean, just keep doing things like that. Like that's that's my passion. Oh, that is awesome, and I have no doubt that you'll continue uh, to live your passion and do a lot of great things, James. And um, I think what you're doing is very noble, and I mean that. So thank you for what you're doing. Um, for those uh, uh, that want to volunteer or yeah. find out more about the Reeve uh, Foundation mm -hmm. uh, or also donate because of course the Reeve Foundation does rely a lot on uh, financial donation and support. Definitely. How can they get involved? 
Well, um, first things first, the website for the Reeve Foundation is chrisreeve.org. And so if viewers want to get involved, they can go to there. And there's sections where they can um, request if they are interested in talking. Uh, if it's a person with paralysis or their family members, they can uh, ask. They can go to the links to get a mentor to talk to. Um, and the mentors are people with paralysis or caregivers. Caregivers can be mentors also. And then people can sign up to be advocates as well. People can um, follow the links to uh, receive information on how they can stay informed for spinal cord injury related policy okay. and how to be a part of that. And then there's also just a wealth of other information that they can learn about how to be involved on that, like through going to that website. So okay. that's the first place to start. All right, brother. Well, hey. Uh, thank you so much. Keep being a man of steel. And I wish the Reeve Foundation and all the men and women of steel within the organization all the best. Thank you so much, James. Thank you. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Again, I'd like to thank James for joining us and hope that you enjoyed the program. Please be sure to tune into Ann Arbor Inclusive next month. And as always, stay awesome, Ann Arbor. <laughs>